Wow, what a good day. Hey, Dr. Romano, I just went to the bee festival. I got some honey. Well, what are you doing here? Do you like bees? Actually, I do like bees, and um, I found something that I think you might find very valuable for the DAT exam, and I'd like to read it to you on bees and pollination. Since I wrote the destroyer questions for you, I make videos for you, I have the study group for you, you ask me questions, why don't I just read to you too, like a little baby, and maybe we can learn a little something. So just sit back and think of this like a bedtime story while I read to you. I like a bedtime you story. Do. Yeah. What is a pollinator? A pollinator is an animal that causes plants to make fruits or seeds. We discussed this in the Destroyer book. They do this by moving pollen from one part of the flower of a plant to another part. This pollen then fertilizes the plant. Oh, and if you remember, what is pollen? It's the male gametophyte. Remember that. Only fertilized plants can make fruit and or seeds. And without them, the plants cannot reproduce. Hopefully you remembered a, a seed is very much like a fertilized egg. Given the proper environmental conditions, it can then blossom into a viable, mature adult organism. In order to pollinate a plant, the pollinator must touch parts of the flower of the plant. Because of this, animal like bees, hummingbirds, hummingbirds, and some kinds of butterflies are the best pollinators because they can get their food from the, pl from the flower of the plant and so brush up against parts of the flower. In the Destroyer book, we have a great problem on bees, and I think you should look at it. Why are bees such good pollinators, you ask? Bees have hairs all over their body, which attract pollen grains through electrostatic forces. Hopefully we all remember electrostatic forces. If you remembered Coulomb's law, what did that tell us? Force is indirectly proportional to the square of the distance. The closer you are, the greater the forces of attraction. Stiff hairs on the legs enable them to groom the pollen into specialized pockets on their legs or body and then carry it back to their nest. Individual bees tend to focus on one kind of flower at a time, which means it is more likely that pollen from one flower will be transferred to another flower of the same species by a particular bee. Pretty interesting how bees can carry the pollen. Many plants require this kind of pollen distribution, known as cross-pollination. You might thank me for that question one day. Make sure you know about cross-pollination. It's within the same plant, that's self-pollination. From one plant to another is cross-pollination. The business of collecting pollen requires a lot of energy, and so many flowers attract and also reward bees with nectar, a mixture of water and sugars produced by the plant. Speaking of a reward, you guys will be rewarded with a really high dot score once you open up the Destroyer book, look at all the questions, and do them a few times. All right, I hope you enjoy this bedtime story with me on bees and pollination. So don't kill any bees. They're actually good guys. Hey, Dr. Romano, there's a bee over there right beside you. Want to play with it? No, maybe I'll kill him. Bye-bye. No, Dr. Romano, leave the bees alone.